What's up everybody? Welcome to Performance Marketer. Eric Beer here. Every day on this channel we like to talk about arbitrage. We talk about lead generation, affiliate marketing, and all that good fun stuff. And today we have a treat. So I posted something uh, a few weeks back about Groupon and their push marketing. And I said, if anybody wants me to go into detail on that and explain it in more detail, um, I'll dive into the company a little bit and I'll do a little video on this uh, and a podcast, right? So um, that's what I did. So today we are going to look at Groupon, the company, right? They own Living Social as well. Uh, in addition to um, their revenues, their marketing strategy, and I, I dove in a little bit. Listen, they're a public company, right? So things are public. So I put together a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna give you a high level view of a public company and their journey from when they went public in 2011, where they IPO'd for a big number. You guys know what an IPO is? If you don't, it's called an initial public offering. And, uh, they IPO'd for $12.7 billion. Wow. Well guys, does everybody know what Groupon is? And if they don't, I'm gonna go through it. So um, if anybody doesn't know who they are, Groupon's a website and a mobile app. And what they do is they offer coupons, cash back on purchases and group deals to different consumers, all right? So they work with like restaurants, retailers, manufacturers, and they all use these deals in an effort to get customers to walk into their establishment or purchase their products, right? Um, Groupon is an e-commerce marketplace, right? We've talked about marketplaces in the past, right? A marketplace is where buyers and sellers come, right? A marketplace could be a supermarket, stock market, and Groupon is a marketplace. It's bringing together buyers and sellers, right? And they're making a middle. Hey, it's like arbitrage, right? <laughs> right? You're bringing together a buyer or seller. They don't even necessarily own any products. At least in the beginning, they didn't. Now they do some of that. But um, overall, what they're doing is in this marketplace, they get people to subscribe to Groupon and they connect them with local merchants. That's what's so powerful about this is that Groupon was able to help the local merchant, the nail salon, the, the massage place, you know, um, it could be a, a service like a, a chiropractor or a doctor, right? Um, the thing is, is that they were able to come out and do this on a local basis, which is really, really powerful, right? Now, the thing with that is that, you know, there's two sides to this business. There's the acquisition side of building up your subscribers, building up your, your list, your email list that you're gonna go and market to, but you also have to have another side where you need to go find merchants and get merchants to come and get deals that they're gonna offer about their product or service to the Groupon subscribers. So there's two sides to the business to grow this, right? In a marketplace, you gotta find the merchants, the advertisers, and you gotta go find the subscribers or consumers. Then you put them together and then you make a piece of that revenue, right? So um, Groupon, they do things in activities, travel, goods, and services across 15 countries. And they ultimately are trying to save you money through the use of any type of virtual coupon. That's the value add for a consumer. Right, they, what they try to do is they try to bring together a lot of people to take the deal. And when that person, when they hit that deal, when there's enough people that, that take the deal, then that deal is intact and then everybody gets a discount. So you'll see things at times where it's like 70% off of the regular price, where you really can't get anywhere else, right? That's the value of a subscriber to Groupon. And what they're doing is they're using the power of, of people of groups to come in and say, okay, let's, if we get a thousand people to buy this coupon, this, this, this coupon of a deal at a 70% discount, then it's active. 
and then it's a period of time they, they use scarcity and urgency with it um, to get people to sign up so um, it's really really a, a, an awesome business and what I've always been so amazed of is that they use email they use SMS text messaging they use you know apps with you know some notifications but everything they're doing they're pushing to all of their subscribers their lists their people on their list and think about it that's what we do right and the hardest thing is to get our messages into the inbox at, at a scale right at, with volume and scale um, depends on, on your type of business but you always want to build up your list and getting your messages into the inbox are really really important for someone to open it and click on it right if the isps don't let you in the inbox then they never see the messages they'll never open it i'll never click on it they'll never purchase so with that said um the crazy thing is they send a ridiculous amount of volume right and this is the point of why it's so powerful people say email's dead email's not dead email's amazing sms amazing pushing going to the consumer to take offers now there's a lot of things you need to do there's strategies that we're going to talk about that they use to get this done but so before we get into that i just want you to understand who they target right their deals attract bargain seekers right so what they're doing is they're targeting anybody that would like to have some sort of deal or discount they're bargain shoppers that they're looking to take any coupon they can find on the internet to make a purchase, right? That's what's getting them to take action. So there are low rates of spending and low rates of return, right? Um, the different types of customers that they have are based on, you know, they have Groupon and Living Social. Living Social caters to a different audience than Groupon does, right? Um, Groupon will skew towards younger users and females while living social is distributed to more like middle-aged people uh equally between the genders so more like a 50 50 male female right so we always talk about how to get traffic how do you target how do you know what offer where do you get your traffic you got to know who you are talking to right you got to know the who right um that is the most important thing before you do anything, you need to know who it is you are talking to, right? If you're talking to everybody, you're talking to nobody. Then the who is the, like most, in my opinion, the most important part of any business. If you don't know the who, it's you're just, you're just throwing darts into the ocean. You don't know how to speak to them. You don't know how to cater to them. You know what deals would work. So that's really important. So as a note, Make sure you know who you are talking to, okay? Now, who does this work well for on the merchant side? Uh, usually businesses that have some fixed costs and low variable costs that might benefit from this model, right? Um, now, how much does it cost to the, to the merchants? This is the beauty of why they love working with Groupon. There's no upfront cost. Ultimately, what happens is they're giving 50% of the profit to Groupon when they do the deal. So what happens is they'll give up, let's say a 70% discount on their services, and then whatever revenue is generated, 50% of that will go to Groupon. So the ultimately way Groupon makes their money is through a commission, right? So Groupon's entire model is all based on commissions. Guess what? What is that? What are we? Performance marketers. Groupon is a performance marketing business. They get paid on performance. They don't charge their merchants anything up front. Whatever they're able to deliver, they get 50% of that top line revenue. I mean, come on, guys, we should all be doing it. That's how we built my business. I did it with affiliate marketing and lead generation. You guys can do it. Anybody can do it. This is at a, a large scale. And you're gonna see once I get into some of the numbers of what they're doing. But so Groupon takes the 50% of every deal it's sold. So um, here's a ex simple example. If a deal generates 1500 bucks in revenue 
from 50 new customers, let's say that they'll be able to generate $750 that would go to the salon, $750 would go to Groupon. So if a salon comes in, they do a deal, come get a blowout, give you a 70% 70, 70 off, deal ends on Friday, and you know, 50 people take that deal, then the gross revenue ends up being 1500 bucks, 750 goes to the salon, 750 bucks goes to Groupon, and everybody's happy. Consumer gets a good deal, Groupon generates some revenue, and now the salon got 50 new customers, right? The idea is that if somebody comes in on that 70% discount for the salon and they like the person, they like the business, they like the like everything about it, the, the whole model there is that they get return users, right? The return customers. So that if the people come back, if they have 50 new customers, the question is how many people are gonna come back within a period of time to get another blowout or a haircut? Can they pick up a customer for life, right? And if they can, then that deal is well worth it, right? Make sense? So their entire strategy is all based off of them pushing messages to the user. And they do it by, guys, segmentation. Segmentation. I talk about this all the time, right? With Survey Detective, it's all around segmentation. It's the most important thing because what happens is you're able to segment your database, your customer base, your, your list based off of certain criteria, right? And we know we could target by all different kinds of things. In this scenario, what they're doing is they're doing it off of their consumer behaviors. And based off how these people behave, they will then create targeted messages to each of those users. In 2021, the total revenue they generated was about a billion dollars. Boom, billion dollars. They have across all their countries, uh, 24 million active customers in their list. So ultimately the value per customer, the value per user, you take the total 24 million divided by the billion and you get $41.67 per user. Boom. Well, guess what guys, when we talk about lead generation, right? And let me, let me show you guys this, because this is really important. Okay. I talk about this all the time, right? So if you look at Groupon and we look at 2021 revenue is one Billion, okay, and active users, 24 million, okay? So we figure out the value per customer is $41. And 67 cents. Okay. This is really important. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. Before I do that, I'm going to tell you what their gross profit was. Which was $737 million. Boom. That's hot. It's hot, right? Well, if I take you all the way back to 2011, they're actually down from when they were in the last few years. So, and they have a new CEO that just came on board, who's from Zappos, who's gonna try to bring Groupon back to life. But at the end of the day, their value is their customers, right? Their value on how they would look at their company is they have 24 million users and the value is $41.67, okay? If they were a private company and they wanted to go and sell, right? How would they do it? They would look at these numbers. I always tell you guys about that, right? If you want to sell your business, if you want to build up an asset and you want to sell a business, if that's your goal and you want to go and sell something at some multiple, you need to build up your list, right? That's why you got to use, 
you know, something. Survey Detective is what I'm building. This is what I'm talking about. So I'm trying to teach you guys. But anybody, anything, lead magnets, landing pages, anything, you got to use something. 4167 is their value per customer, right? Gross. That's what they're making. Let's call it gross value per customer. They're making 737 million. Let's do the math on that. Okay, so the gross profit per customer is the 737 divided by the 24, which equals uh, $30.71. Okay, so the reason why that's important is because if we own this business and we have to go out and acquire new subscribers, right? You have 24 million subscribers and we know if we can get more subscribers, active subscribers, right? There are definitely people dropping off this list all day long. So they have to continuously be pushing out messages to get people to join the Groupon list, right? So that's huge, right? They have a lot of different things when they're when they're marketing. They have their acquisition team, right? Their customer acquisition team, which is their, their team that's out there going to buy leads to build up their list, right? That's something that we could do for them. We can go out to Groupon if they are open to it. We can go and find the person in charge of customer acquisition, call them up, and, and try to figure out like, what are they doing? What's the offer? How are they promoting it? Do they have any affiliate offers, right? And are they doing it where they're driving traffic to their form, where we go and get a link? Or are they open to us generating leads on our platform? And then we post those leads to their database and they pay us on a cost per lead, right? And then the whole model would work where we would look at it as what are they paying? So. If you look here, they're making $30.71. So what can they afford to pay per lead? Well, you know that they're making $41.30 net. So they would back it out into what they can acquire a customer for. And it all depends on how they determine what the value of a customer is versus the value of a lead. Now we don't know those numbers, right? You can get leads, right? You can build up a list, right? So you can build up a list of 1 million people, right? But maybe only 250,000 of them are active and make a purchase, right? So in that scenario, only 25% only of the leads you're generating is turning into active users. So if they paid a dollar for 1 million users, they spent a million dollars, right? 1 million cost, right? Now, what is the, what do you back it out to of what their cost is for an active user, right? Active user cost equals what? You guys know, right? You take the 250,000 by the 1 million, which is 25%, right? So it's a four times whatever that cost is, right? So if you're doing $1 million cost at a dollar, that means that they're cap they're capturing people at $4 per active user, right? So they have to play with these numbers to see what's going on on their back end. When they're when they're generating traffic so does that number fit i don't know but i know you know high level they're making 30 bucks and if they can acquire customers for four dollars it looks like it's a pretty good deal right the question is does it work for the publishers is it backing out as a profitable is something exciting to us that we would want to run this offer right they can pay a dollar right but that may not be that exciting to us it may you don't know it depends on how the people will react to the marketing messages on your behalf and what's your media costs, right? If you can generate a sign up for a dollar, get paid for a dollar, right? And it costs you 50 cents, 
right? You know, our cost on the media buy, then we're making 50 cents on every lead, which would mean we'd make a half a million dollars on this campaign, right? Right? This would be a $500 million profit for us working with Groupon if all these numbers worked out. Now, guys, the point is when you understand this business, you only need a few numbers to really play around and figure out what's going on in different businesses. Obviously, when they're public, that you get so much more information, it's amazing. Um, but so this is the kind of stuff that we can play around with on the media buy side, right? For us, we're the ones that we're now the, the media experts, we're media arbitragers, right? We're, we're going out and, and hustling to make things happen, whether it's us buying the media or we're, we're promoting the offer out to other people. You know, we got to do the deal with Groupon first, and then we go out and find all the places that we're going to buy traffic, right? How we set up the deal just depends, right? We could do it on a, a CPA basis, right? Or, or a CPL basis. And I'll pay you whenever you generate XYZ. That's the the least amount of risk for us because we're telling them, right, that we'll pay you 50 cents for a time and you get me someone to sign up for Groupon, right? Then what you need to do is watch to see how the quality of the traffic is. You know that right now it's about, you, you need to convert 25% of all leads into active users, right? You need 25%. So what you're doing is you're communicating back with Groupon and as you're sending traffic, right, what you want to do is when you have you have different sources, the way to track it is that you set up different IDs for each source that you're dri driving traffic from, right? So that you don't look at it from a global perspective. Sure, like when, you, when you're invoicing and all that good jazz, you are, right? But you, you're going to have multiple sources when you scale this, right? You might have 10 different places that you're driving traffic from. Each one may be sending 100,000 leads a month for you to make up those million, right? Some of it may be you media buying on, uh, buying PPC on search uh, for Google or Bing, right? You might be buying traffic on Facebook or native and to bull and outbreak, or you might have some affiliates that you're working with that are driving traffic for you, right? Now, how are you finding where these people are? Again, it's the who, who are we targeting? We gotta figure out who these people are. The more information we have, the easier it is for us to find out where they're hanging out on the internet. Right. But the whole cool thing about this business is we're taking this online strategy to be able to get users to sign up for Groupon. And then what Groupon's doing is they're helping local businesses scale their business. And it's powerful. That's why these local businesses love this, because if Groupon's doing all this work to get the subscribers and the right people in the right place, they only pay when they get sales. It's a good deal for them. Right. So that's why the business works. Everybody wins. Right. So I just wanted to show you guys that it's really important if you don't understand this. And I know it's a lot of math, but math's everything. Math, this whole business is all about math. The more you get it, the, the more successful you will be. Right. But the beautiful thing about this is, is that it's affiliate marketing. Right. I built my business using affiliate marketing. Right. Lead generation. I, don't, I didn't own anything. I, I just do a deal with Groupon. That's it. That's it. Or any other company in the world. And you guys can do this. You can do this. I promise you, you can do this. It's it's not hard, right? It's how I made my first million. I mean, more than that. But, you know, if I, you know, I should do a podcast on how I made my first million uh, with yeah, affiliate marketing, lead generation, arbitraging media without taking on any investment from any venture capitalist or outside money. Without any... Anybody giving me money in my pocket by doing all this and anybody can do it, right? But so in any event, these are the numbers that we're looking at here. Um, today, if you go Groupon, their, uh, their symbol, if you guys want to look it up yourself, is G-R-P-N, okay? Right now, when I looked earlier, they were trading at $19.23. Share price. We've talked about this in the past. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but just to give you an idea of how this all works, okay? 
Groupon is trading at $19.23 per share, right? So what's the market cap? What is the market cap of Groupon? How do you figure that out? You can go look online, of course, and cheat. Or if you want to figure it out the real way is what do you need to know? You need to know how many shares are outstanding to the public, right? If you can figure out how many shares are outstanding to the public, which in this case is 29.91 million. Outstanding shares. is 29.91 million. So the market cap of this right now is 574 million. Five hundred and seventy four million. Okay. Now, the one thing that we've talked about in the past just so you understand this, okay? I'm, I'm gonna finish with this so you guys can get this, okay? Because this is the public side of things. For people that wanna sell their businesses, people that wanna figure out the value, what can I sell my company for, what can I do, right? Well, you look at the price per earnings, P-E equals, okay? Your price per earnings right now is like 5.19. Okay, well, what does that mean? What that means is that at 574 million in market cap, they're trading at a five times multiple of what they earn, okay? So let me, let me reverse engineer that for someone who is a private company that wants to sell their company and they wanna figure out what's going on. Let's pretend like we have a company like this as well. Now, what's happening is, this is the market cap. Let's pretend that we have another business. Okay. Let's say we, we start a, a business like this where we want to go and help uh, local services, merchants, sell things, get indoor, walk in traffic, you know, restaurants need it, etc. right? Let's pretend like all year long, we end up doing this and we end up making over five years, let's say year five, we build the business up to be able to do, uh, let's say, you know, $10 million in the year, in 2000 and 2025, right? What are we in 2022? So take three years, four years to get to, $10 million in revenue, right? Gross revenue. If we take uh, what's going on here, they're making 737 million divided by the 1 billion in revenue. So the gross profit is about 73%. So that's like 7.37 7 million. Gross profit, right? It's a damn good business. You guys can literally model this business. It's there for the taking. It's a lot of hustle, a lot of work. You gotta build up, you know, the business, the platform. You gotta have the, the people on the sales side for both the finding the merchants, and you also have the people that have to acquire customers for you on the, on the subscriber side, right? And it's like the chicken or the egg kind of thing, right? You need money to go to get the subscribers, but you also need people <laughs> to, to go sell to the merchants. So it's like that starting point is where it's a little tricky, right? Um, no one's gonna give you a deal unless you have enough people that you can get the deals for. So, um, you know, a little salesmanship to make it happen. But <clears throat> in any event, this is the most important thing, okay? I'm not gonna get into like users and all that good jazz, but ultimately what this means is if we're a private company, and we wanted to sell and we're trying to find comps and we're similar to Groupon, right? Maybe Groupon wants to buy us, right? Maybe we have another 10 million users and of those 10 million users, maybe 7 million of them are unique to, to Groupon, right? Like they have 24 million. So now all of a sudden they can 
bump it up to 31 million, right? And immediately grow their business. Or maybe they take all 10 million, right? Because whatever we're doing here, we're generating revenue. It doesn't really matter even if they have an overlay or not, because whatever our product is, they're engaging with it, right? They're responding to it. Uh, so that's a really important thing for you to understand. But bottom line is when we go and communicate with a virtual, uh, uh, like a virtual, like a, maybe like a private equity firm or a Groupon to sell our company, right? We want to sell. The way we would look at it is we would go do research on all the companies in the space. And it says that right now Groupon's trading at a five multiple, right? So five X. multiple. So if you take the 7.37 million, what you do, right, you can sell in different ways. You can sell on gross revenue um, or you can do it on net revenue. For me, you listen, there's, there's different ways. Some companies that are public need to build up their top line. Their top line is their gross revenue, right? But for me, that means nothing. I, I care about profit. I care about what are we making, okay? You, you can generate $100 million, but if you're making $5 million in EBITDA, right? $95 million is, is going to cost of running the business and generating this $5 million when we can just go here and do a $10 million business and generate $7.37 million. To me, that's exciting. To me, I work on the bottom line. If I were to sell a business, I would do it on the bottom line, right? I mean, listen, if someone's a buy on a top line, then God bless you, right? Because if you look at it, the seven multiple <coughs> times five, is right here. $36,850,000. million, $850,000. You can sell your company. Tot, right? Guys, 2025. So let's say you start it next month, right? So from, uh, let's say June 22nd to 23, to 24, to 25. So by June of 2025, if you can accomplish this. You can sell your company for 36 million bucks based on these numbers. I mean, wow, right? And remember, when we were looking at what the value per customer is, is 4167 in gross. So what we would look at, right, is if we looked at that to figure it out, right, the value per customer equals 4167. So that would mean that we need to generate 239,980 active subscribers. 139,980 active subs. Right? Over th over three years. Um, if you're going to work on that same profit, then you would do it by same thing, same 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 float. Right? But that's the point, right? You can sell your company for 36 million. Now, maybe you want to sell it for 7X, right? Or maybe you make the case that it's all about leverage, right? You know, 10X. You know, if you were able to do five multiple times the top line, that'd be 50 million, right? Versus the 36. But you're not, there's no profit there. And you got to make the case and the company needs to buy it to see, like, how are they going to make their money back over time? What is, how does this make sense to us? You know, what does this look like? Are they going to have churn? Are the customers there to stay? Right? How, how fast are you losing customers? Right? What's the outlook of the business? Right? I mean, if you look right now, and this is why I wanted to show you this, right? I'm just going to go through this right now with, with what's going on with Groupon. Okay? In 2011, when they had their IPO, they had 33,742,000 customers. And they did 1.6 billion in revenue. Okay, so if you look at 2011, they had 33 million actives, now they have 24, and they did 1.6 billion in revenue. And the value per user was $47.42. I 
So every number is down from 2011. And there's a bunch of numbers in between that I've done, but I just don't want to go through crazy amount of numbers with you. It's enough already here. But guys, this is this is a business. This is gold. Like if you guys can understand this, you can put together a strategy for any business. You could find a, 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 a company that you like, whether it's private or public, if you can figure out all these numbers and then you can go through their process and hack them or well, their competitors, you don't have to be a genius. You're literally just modeling what you know works. Here you go. Here's the 17 things that they said in this, in this blog post that I read that they said is the most important thing for any of their push pipeline programs. And I'm gonna go through these quickly just so that you can hear it and then we're gonna be done, okay? So number one is deliver all email notifications within two hours of the scheduled time because the campaigns are st strategically targeted for that duration. So they know the chances of opening, clicking and purchasing are higher during this window. So they need to get those messages out within that window, right? They also, so important that they, you need to deliver the right content, right? There's, they have these relevant set of deals for different target markets to the right audience, to the right target market, right? So what they're doing is they're, they're segmenting by their behavior, what they're doing. Where, where people are purchasing certain things, they're starting to learn about who they are, what they like, what they're about, right? And once they learn about their, their behaviors, their, their buying behaviors, now they can start to create some targeted messages with relevant offers from what they purchased that they know they've already purchased on that they're interested in, right? So it's killer. Um, use the right look and feel for any email. Um, then build out the profile of their subscribers so they know what kind of marketing messages can be delivered. Um, Again, we were talking about it earlier, but local area location, detect the moving users and target them with deals in that vicinity. So the idea is that you give a, you give a message and a deal to somebody in a certain location. So if you're able to identify where they are on their mobile phone with location services, you can serve relevant deals with that in the moment, right? It's all about intent, right guys? It's all about intent. Google, when people search, that's why it's the best traffic on the internet is Google and Bing and, and AOL and Yahoo, whatever that search function is. People are out there searching for, so they have intent, the highest intent possible. So um, you have to be able to handle sudden spikes in traffic. That's another big thing for them. So when you when you start to scale your business, you gotta be prepared for being able to handle if you're if you're killing it, if, if things are working and people are just clicking away like crazy. Uh, you gotta be prepared for that. Um, Personalized messages for audiences, like we said. Um, and if you want, you need to have your team like, personalize it and make sure that someone's paying attention to that so it doesn't get screwed up. Um, if somebody's not clicking or engaging, you should dormant that user. Perhaps you try to re-engage them with, with less frequent emails and messages. Maybe once a month you send something to try to get them to re-engage. Right? If they have 24 million active users, they might have a few billion emails in their database, but only 24 million are active, right? So can they get other people to re-engage? And that's by trying to send them something relevant that's useful for them. If they can, boom, it's added to the actives and then they can start to make money and then they fall back into all these different sequences that of where they fall within the different segmentation. Um, so suppression files, uh, consider blocking certain users from certain messages, right? So what I mean by suppression files is like, ultimately a suppression file means don't mail. So you use that to scrub against the, 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 the mailing list. So if you have a mailing list where you're mailing to a million people, but then you're like, you know what? 250,000 of these people, it's not gonna be relevant for them. Let's use that as a suppression file to scrub against the million and it only sends to 750,000. Um, uh, automate your data driven marketing campaigns so that you get scheduled in large numbers. Um, deals sent in email or mobile notifications should be an active and non sold out deal. So 
this is for their business, right? Like you guys may not have to worry about this, but ultimately like if something hits cap, they need to prepare for that and then make a change, some audible, right? If they hit cap and there's no more deals available for that, then they have to on the run be able to change that for all the other people that are getting these messages. Otherwise it's not relevant. So there's a lot of ways they could do it on the run, on the run if they have a system to do it, or they message, hey, this deal's not offered to you anymore because it's gone. Uh, but here's other offers that may be interested to you, right? Um, ability to constantly update both rested users as well as users uh, that are trying to get off your list. These are your unsubscribes. It's so important if you're in this business where you're pushing messages to people, you have to have an unsubscribe file. You have to give people the ability to opt out, right? The way you get people to come in is you get them to opt in saying, yes, I'm interested in receiving your messaging. But at any point in time, if they're like, this is baloney, I don't want this anymore, you have to have all kinds of ways to allow these people to opt out. Let them write a letter, click on something, or they can go and unsubscribe, and then you need to then have somebody managing this list that's updated at least weekly, daily if you can, that then you use to suppress against any messaging that you're doing so that person doesn't receive any messages anymore. It's really important, right? It's all about canned spam. You can get in big trouble if you don't understand that. So you guys, if you're gonna start getting involved with this push marketing, you wanna get people to opt in and give you permission, and you wanna be able to understand how unsubscribes work and how you can suppress against your list so you avoid any issues and complaints and things like that that can take down your business, right? Can't You have to be can't spam compliant, right? Look it up, you can see, it'll explain to you. Um, you gotta be able to support all kinds of clients who want different notifications from different platforms, right? Um, it's a big deal, these guys are a huge company. So um, if, you're, if you're working on different platforms, right? Mobile, email, um, you know, apps, you gotta be able to manage all of that internally. Uh, a message which is delayed for them, okay? So let's say they have a two hour time span where they say they wanna ma mail this offer and they throttle the messages. Let's say there's 20 million people that they're trying to send to. When you throttle, which means you say, you send X amount every five minutes, right? So it's like a little bit at a time to try to get to that 20 million. But if it gets delayed, what they do because they don't continue to mail it, they stop it and drop it. So they can only deliver 16 million out of the 20 million. Those 4 million people that are not going to get that message because it's not going to work. It's going to be a waste, right? They're going to they're going to lose money. It's going to be a bad experience. So they just they drop it. Um, and mo mobile notifications never be delivered beyond a certain day. Various platforms should not impact each other. Email campaigns should not result in the delay of any mobile push campaigns. So what they're saying is like, if you're sending messages through those three platforms, email, mobile apps, and email gets delayed, that doesn't mean you just, you stop the mobile and the app and the, the app notifications. Those go out just as planned and you just, you miss the email side. And their last thing they say, which is, Anybody that's in this business should know this, but be able to handle your bounces, your hard and soft bounces that waste resources and impact the reputation of your company with the ISPs. Um, hard bounces and soft bounces are just are bad emails, bad phone numbers, right? Um, when you're sending and that's happening, the ISPs look at that very negatively. And if you do that and you start sending to these bogus emails, then you, your reputation can hurt and then you may lose delivery altogether. So those are the 17 things that Groupon in this blog post is telling you what to look out for. That's the most important thing for their pipeline for push marketing strategy. So um, guys, with that said, I hope this was useful. Um, dove into this business a little bit, um, did some numbers, gave you some insight on what they're saying uh, they're doing and how they're able to send 180 trillion push marketing messages a year. Wow, that's insane. Insane, huge business. Um, really, really impressive. Uh, but so that's what it's all about. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen, all this is here. You wanna sell your business for 36 million? Go follow this model. You know, uh, watch this 10 times from what we were talking about earlier and sell your company for 5X 
$36 million and then, you know, buy me a cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, appreciate you guys being here. Appreciate uh, all of you that are subscribed. I thank you. Uh, I passed 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is cool because it's all organic. I get a lot of messages from that. Um, I love YouTube. I think it's the most powerful medium on the internet, uh, followed by a podcast. So that's why this is for both. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe uh, and you know, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Helps out. Really appreciate it. Um, if you're listening to this on my podcast, uh, subscribe. Turn on your, your notifications on both so you can get any new episodes as we publish them. Um, leave a review. That would be great. It's really helpful. And share this with anybody you think may, may, may be interested. Any entrepreneur that you think can get some value out of this, I would appreciate it. Uh, because um, I'm here. My mission is to just make an impact on other people's lives with things that uh, I've learned over the years in my business ventures. And uh, yeah, make a difference and it's fun. And, and it gives me purpose and I love it. Um, so um, yeah, subscribe to all of them. And uh, if you wanna text me, you can join my text community, 917-636-1998. Uh, and there, I try to answer that daily as much as I can. There's a lot of people on it. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time because there's a lot and I try to be uh, doing it myself personally. Um, so um, bear with me on that. But uh, I also have some announcements on there uh, when anything new is going on. So uh, that's helpful. Um, and lastly, if anybody that listens to this or watches this is a Mets fan, let me know because I have met season tickets and there are times where I can't go to the games. And what I like to do is I like to give away tickets to people that are awesome. Um, maybe we could do a little like giveaway here, like uh, people share or like, or things like that. Cause they're awesome seats. Uh, all you can eat killer seats. So much fun right behind the home plate, like a few rows back, you're right by the players. It's fun. It's, it's an experience. And it's so much fun. Um, I, I post on my Instagram and, and Facebook when I'm there. So um, I'm going there today, right? They have two games right now. I'm going to meet my company. So three guys from my company are meeting me there and we're going to have a meeting and hang out and watch a ball game and have fun and live life to the fullest. And I expect all you guys to do the same. So love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Uh, I'm, I'm rooting for you if you're going for it. Uh, hang in there, keep a good mindset. Mindset is everything. It's the most important thing. Stay positive. You can do this. I believe it. I know you can. You have to believe it. So with that said, appreciate you. Thanks for being here. I'm out. Later.